Hi everybody, my name is John Orr and I'm an engineer on the Course Builder team. Today I'm going to introduce a new set of features in Course Builder 1.8 which let instructors add a skill map to their courses. I'm going to start with a description of what a skill map means in Course Builder and then I'll show how it can help students to get a deeper understanding of course content and to explore the course to better meet their own personal needs and interests. Next, I'll show how this translates to new analytic insights for the instructor on students' mastery of the course goals. Then we'll look at how the course designer manages the set of skills taught. And finally, how to use skill maps to drive goal-oriented content design. Course Builder 1.8 introduces a set of features to support creating and managing skill maps. Here, a skill means some unit of knowledge in the course, something which can be taught, learned, or assessed. For example, I can add single-digit numbers, or I can build compound queries. It can be a single skill, or a more complex skill, which depends on several previous skills in the course. In Course Builder, lessons can be tagged with the skills taught. Skills have prerequisites and follow-ons, and this helps the student to identify the key ideas of each lesson and gives pointers for exploring the course in a non-linear way. So let's take a look at a course with a skill map added in. Course Builder ships with a copy of the Power Searching with Google course, and we've augmented this in 1.8 by tagging the lessons with the skills taught. This is the instructor's view of the course outline, where you can see a list of all the lessons and the skills taught in each lesson. Clicking on one of the lessons, we see, now from the student's perspective, that the lesson advertises what skills are taught, right at the top of the page. If you hover over the tags, they show more detail about the, what the skills comprise. And if you click to open the tray, there's more in-depth information about the skills that are needed for this lesson and the skills that follow on from it. So let's say that before I study this lesson, I want to know more about how to build an effective query. Then I see that that's taught in lesson 1.4, and I can click through to study that first. Then, after I've understood more about what makes an effective query, I can open up the tray again in this lesson and see all the places that this skill gets used and I can follow through to them if I want. So students who want to find their own pathways through the course and explore all these different links can use this to personalize their learning pathways. So we've seen how students can make use of the skill map. For the instructor, this also opens up interesting new analytics information. Back in the Instructors dashboard, we've added a new Skills Map sub-tab to the Analytics tab. This shows two analytics derived from Skill Map data. The first gives student progress with a stacked chart of the number of students who have learned each skill. And the other lets you choose skills to examine I do here. And draws a chart which compares student progress on each of these skills over the lifetime of the course. We've also added a skill map tab to the dashboard to review all the skills in the course, both in tabular and graphical view. In tabular view, you can see all the skills, their prerequisites, and what lessons they're taught in. In the graphical view, you can see the web of dependencies between skills. You can focus in on particular skills, and you can rearrange the layout of the graph to understand all the interrelationships of the skills. So far we've looked at an existing skill map, but also the process of building a skill map can be a great tool for pedagogical design. To do that, you start with the skills which you want to teach and build the design of the lessons around them. So, for example, let's go into another class which I created earlier 
and I'll start by creating a set of basic arithmetic skills. So the first skill that I create might be place value. That's the skill of being able to recognize ones, tens, and hundreds. The next skill that we want might be to, to be able to count by tens. Count forward by tens. And the third skill might be to count by fives. Count forward by fives. Now when we look at these skills, then there's a prerequisite clearly that to count by tens you want to know something about place value. So I'll edit the skill and add that in. And to count by fives, you want to know something about counting by tens and place value. I'm just going to quickly add a few more skills in the same way. So now I've added in some more skills, and here's our simple skill map. We can see the layout of skills and prerequisites here, and we can easily add, edit, or delete skills. If we jump to the graphical view, we can get insights about the structure of the material. For example, you can't miss the really critical role that place value plays in this course. You can see some of the possible paths which a student could take through the material, and you can even see how there seem to be two separate streams in the material, addition, subtraction, and counting and multiplication. Next, we can use the skill map to plan out the lessons that we'll use to teach these skills. Let's go to the course outline and start adding lessons. We'll add a first lesson that will teach the skills numbers and counting. And we'll make sure that we tag that with the key skill of place value, counting by tens, and counting by fives. These are the skills that we're going to teach in this lesson. If we go on in the same way, we can add a lesson on addition, and the skills which it should cover are adding single digits, adding double digits, and adding any two numbers. So now I've added a couple more lessons to finish off covering all the skills. And you can see at a glance, here in the course overview, what skills each lesson is supposed to cover. If we jump back to the Skills tab, we can look down the table and make sure that we have indeed made a lesson to cover each of the skills. Now, the content that you put into the lesson itself is, of course, the most important thing, and creating that would be the next task. I hope this video shows that using skill maps as a way of structuring your course helps to organize the course structure and ensure that you address all the goals that you want. In this video, we've seen how the new skill mapping features in Course Builder 1.8 can be used to enable tagging lessons with skills, to guide individualized student explorations, to help structure course creation, and to provide new analytics insights for instructors. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoy the new features of Course Builder 1.8.